So this is a follow-up video to my uh, STB221 video where we modified the Amiga power supply to use a, a new meanwhile switching power supply. I've had a couple questions about it, so I thought I'd do a, a video with additional details and uh, show a safety mod I'm going to make as well to the power supply. But first, I'm going to come back and harp on a kind of what I talked about before. So if you're going to attempt this, you need to make sure that the color coding of the wires in your cable are known. In my case, uh, you saw me in previous videos uh, ohm out the cable to make sure that the red lead was on this pin. We're looking into the male plug here. Uh, the D10 is to the top here, so we have orientation. And I went with the ohm meter and, and just verified this pin goes to the red wire, this pin goes to the black wire, this pin goes to the brown wire, this pin goes to yellow, and this center pin goes to the white wire. And the voltages on the pins are what's called out here. So plus 12 here, minus 12 here, plus 5. The ground back to the power supply, and in this case the shield, this outer case, and pin. Uh, make absolutely sure that you've owned this out, and if your colors don't match what I've got here, then use the colors you discover. When you complete the mod, you need to come back, and again, we see this in a couple different videos where we measure the voltages on the pins to make sure that this matches. So, I've taken a, a, a kind of a, a capture of the Meanwhile power supply here that I'm using, and the first thing to talk about is this is a PT65B. The model number is B, power supply. The model A, C, or D will not work as they have different voltages. Uh, this is a plus 5 and plus and minus 12 volt power supply. So based on the color codes I found uh, in my cable, this is where they were attached. So the plus 12 is to this first pin here. Plus 5 is to this pin. The black ground is to this pin. The shield is to this pin as it shows here and the white wire is to here. On the printed circuit board itself these two solder holes are connected together and these two solder holes are connected together. So by hooking the ground from the cable to this point and the shield wire to this point in the cable they're electrically tied together. I then added an additional wire in the previous video originally on the back of the board and I've removed that and I've instead just used a jumper wire that is also soldered into this hole and it jumpers around here I've shown it in purple to the solder lug that's on the board here. Uh, the color of this wire really doesn't matter I think in my build video all I had was black. I've drawn it here in purple just to make it stand out and again to kind of reemphasize what I said here this additional wire is used to connect the Amiga shield pin to the protective earth over here. Uh, and because of the two pads being hooked together it also hooks it up to ground in this drawing, I've color-coded the wires coming from the line cord here. They are black, white, and green. These, this color coding is the normal uh, North American color coding, where green is protective earth, white is neutral, and the line is on the black. This is the, the, the hot lead. In my build, the line cord black is connected to one side of the power switch, which happens to have brown wires on it. The other side of the power switch goes, of course, to the pin here. The neutral comes in here, and then that protective earth, the green lead coming in from the power plug, is also hooked to the, the spade plug here. So this protective earth gets passed through the purple wire to the shield and the cable and to the system ground, and this gives everything a really nice, solid reference. Uh, I determined that these really, uh, that this, this and this were hooked together. Oh, excuse me, sorry about the jumping video there. We're hooked together by looking at an actual North American power supply with an ohm meter and ohming out the connections and discovered that inside of that North American power supply these were tied together. I can't speak the European power beyond knowing it's 220 volts. There seems to be a couple different standards there. You may have to research the data sheet for the PT65B if you attempt this to figure out what colors you would bring. Uh, what plugs here again I'm only speaking to North America the meanwhile power supply itself can take 90 to 264 volts ACN so it would be compatible with Europe and from 47 to 440 Hertz so again it's compatible with you know the 240 220 230 whatever uh, is in Europe and most of the rest of the world 
and they're 55 hertz. So this power supply really covers, I think, the vast majority of all of the line voltages in the world. Uh, is there anything else to speak to here? Uh, the switch I used was reused from the original Amiga European power supply. Uh, the original mod had me add a yellow jumper wire on the back of the board, and I really disliked what I did. Uh, I just think that was a potential safety issue. You drop it, the wire breaks loose. With this wire being through the solder hole here and attached well to the, the solder lug here, the spade plug, it should be electrically better. Uh, the other thing you'll see in the video is in the first video I used metal standoffs in the four corners to hold the board in the case. Uh, th those metal standoffs had metal screws and we ended up with four screws on the outside of the plastic case. That was really a very poor decision on my part. Uh, if something was to happen in the supply and there was some kind of weird short and this pin here say became the line voltage or it became the high voltage in the switcher here in the power supply, that would bring that high voltage to that, screw, that metal screw outside of the case, which is just dangerous. Uh, I have replaced the mounting hardware and the screws with nylon uh, spacers and screws and nuts. That electrically isolates the case. That leaves the entire outside of the case now plastic with the four little nylon screws. So it's electrically much safer. I picked those up at a local Ace Hardware here on the Pacific Coast. Um, I think most hardware stores you can get nylon spacers and nylon screws, etc. at. So again, we'll see that work done in the, the upcoming video as well. So I think I've captured everything here. I hope the uh, drawings here help a bit. I'm going to harp again on make sure you know the color coding your cable. And if you accidentally wire the plus 12, to this pin down here, you will fry your Amiga. I think the minus 12 would most likely fry it as well. Uh, after your cable build, ground lead on the DVM to the shield here and check these voltages and make sure they match. I have tested this on my Amiga 500 and 1200. I'm assuming all Amigas that use this plug use the same pin out. Again, if you have a different model, I would recommend uh, hitting the internet and making sure what you know the pinout I've represented here and the voltages are correct for your machine. Well, with all of that said, I think I will wrap this piece up and we'll jump into the so video. So we're back around at the uh, power supply that we modded in an earlier video for my uh, Amiga 1200. Uh, this is using a Meanwell power supply. Mm -hmm. It's a new switching power supply. Uh, it, as was mentioned in the other video, it just kind of fits in the case. It's not perfect, but it's close. Uh, I'm really unhappy with what I did back here on the back of the board with this jumper wire. This is somewhat dangerous. And if this was dropped and this wire was to break loose, it could move around and touch things in here, short out and destroy the power supply. Uh, and just kind of unhappy with what I did here. This power supply's worked really well. It barely gets warm in my A1200 with the uh, you know, a CPU ac accelerator card and the additional memory and, and everything I've loaded on the machine. So I'm gonna clean this up. And to clean this up, the first thing I'm gonna do is of course get a large enough tip on the soldering pencil so I can actually generate some heat. Luckily my JVC will hot swap. I'm just going to remove this wire and we're not going to do this this way at all going forward. Let me pull that wire off of there. I'm going to pull it off of here. I am going to go ahead and now reflow the solder joints over here that I just removed the wire from just to make sure they're nice and clean and well soldered. There's a couple of uh, protection capacitors on there that are important for safety. So the idea of what I did here, let me see if I can get down here, kind of where you can see through, is the, bl the black wire in the bundle in my cable is ground. The yellow wire is the shield around the cable to reduce RF noise and it gets grounded. 
and then the green lead coming in from the line cord is earth ground or safety ground and those three points need to be tied together so this is electrically looks like a, a stock power supply so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and pull the yellow and black cables back off the board here going to clean all that solder off there if we can find the tool and the two joints we just released got most of it that got the rest of it and what I'm going to do instead if I can find the piece of wire Oh, it's always amazing to me that you prep ahead of time and then can't find what you prepped with. I have a piece of wire laying here someplace that I plan to use for this. Or I may have to cut another piece because I don't see it laying here. So this isn't particularly heavy gauge wire. It doesn't need to be. It's not going to carry a lot of current. But what I'm going to do is instead uh, clean this ground connection up. I'm going to re-tin it. It didn't tin really well the first time it was soldered. And I'm going to take this lead, I'm going to attach it to the yellow lead, goes down through the same hole to get soldered. And then I'm going to bring this lead around and I'm going to solder it in to the same solder like here this ground connection's on. So rather relying on it being on the back of the board, uh, and just using solder to hold it in place. It'll actually get, like I say, attached to the lug over here. So, uh, not really happy, like I say, with how this ground lead here actually tinned up. Uh, there's a lot of old copper showing. So I'm going to get some flux on there, hopefully, and hopefully the flux pin here won't explode. As I had a different one do. I'm going to add some flux if I can. I can get something under there to kind of push up against that won't make too big a mess. And of course, nothing's jumping out here to be useful for this. There, that got a blob out. Oh, well, now it's dripped. I'll just dip it in what's dripped. But the flux will help that lead, hopefully, tin up better. And of course, there's now liquid flux on the table that'll get all sticky and make a big mess. Let's see if I can clean that up a bit. sticky there, but I've got some flux in there on that lead, and now I'm going to heat that lead up again, and flow some fresh solder onto it, hopefully get a little bit better tinning on it, yeah that already looks better, oh, the wonderful smell of flux. The problem is the insulation on the wire here is not handling the heat very well. This yellow lead isn't particularly heavy. It doesn't need to be. Uh, strip back some insulation from this guy. And I should be able to wrap these two together. Hopefully and hit them with some solder. Now, if I can get them to wrap together. Of 
the holes on the PCB are pretty large, so even these two pieces of, of wire here wrapped together should fit through the uh, solder hole just fine. Really. And I will. So there were. The red is the plus five. So the red is the plus five, and it's here. There's a second plus five pad we're not using, and then there's two ground pads. Both these pads are connected together and are grounds, and that's the pads we removed the wires from earlier. And I'm just going to feed these through. The holes, if I can get them to go through. And of course, this is going to make a liar out of me. You should fit through there just fine. Always got to be a little stubborn. So what's happening here is the black lead out of the power cable, the yellow lead, and this black wire have come through the two holes here. And these will be soldered down. Actually, I went through the wrong hole for one of them. I'm glad I double checked here. This one actually needs to go through over here. So again, we've got the unused 5 volt here. We've got the yellow and black coming through here and the solid black coming through here. And these pads are common. They have copper in between them. And so we'll just solder that up. And that will electrically make all three of those wires attach together. heavy black lead in the cable is the ground so it, it's the return path or the source path depending on how you view electronics. So apologies the uh, excuse me camera stopped recording right in the middle of what I was doing there but I'll just recap here what we were looking at was I had uh, how to describe this we have the black lead that is the system, system ground and the yellow that's the shield and I then soldered both of those then added an extra wire link that went through the same hole as the yellow wire. It's the black wire and then soldered both sides of these. And these are electrically connected together. So at this point, the yellow, the black, and this extra wire added are all electrically tied together. I then routed this black lead around to the uh, spade connector here that we've got the earth ground onto. And what that's doing is essentially taking the shield and the system ground, and everything's going to get back to earth ground for safety. Uh, the yellow wire we had on the bottom of the board here did, electrically did the same thing. Uh, as I said, I just wasn't happy with that. Uh, fear of it, you, you know, the supply being dropped, and that wire breaking loose and touching something that it shouldn't. And so I really didn't want that. Uh, I think this is a safer solution, although that floating wire is questionable as well. Uh, I think it should be okay. This heat sink here, nothing really gets hot here under use on this. So I don't think there's any danger of the insulation getting melted and this getting shorted someplace. This heat sink over here is actually tied to the same ground point. So if this was to melt through and short to that, it really wouldn't do anything. Uh, you know, again, I think this will be fine. This obviously isn't like a commercial grade uh, build, but we do want it built for safety. The next thing I'm going to do is release the brass standoffs I used here. After I put this together, I realized it was act this was actually a really poor decision using metal here for these standoffs, and we'll talk about that in a second when I get these off. Uh, the problem with using metal with these is, of course, this metal's conductive. 
the standoffs are brought to the outside of the case to the screws that go through the four holes here. So those screws are metal into metal standoffs down to the board. And although two of these are electrically tied back to this green line, two of these were floating. And if something were bad were to happen inside and you know a wire broke off and touched one of these or you know something bad happened on the board, there's a potential for line voltage to appear on these or high voltage from the supply or high frequency or whatever, there's a chance those could become electrically active if, if the supply went bad. And if that was true when you touched one of those with your finger, you could get a shock. So instead what I'm going to do is convert this over to using nylon screws and nylon standoffs to mount it. Uh, you can get these at most hardware stores. I think I got these at Ace Hardware uh, here locally. So we'll put this back together using nylon hardware instead and that way it is electrically isolated and should be safer. To do this I will I'm doing this off camera. I'm going to drop these through and they actually look a little bit better on the case than the hard metal you know screw heads that we had before they blend in a little bit better the idea here is I don't want these dropping out. Uh, there should be one more buried in here. And we'll drop spacers down over these. And again, these are just nylon spacers. Uh, this is just kind of stuff that came out of my one of those and I should be now able to put this back together and make sure I get it in the right direction There's a screw trapped in there sorry again for the interruption so uh, we've got the nylon screws in the spacers and I just wanted to make sure orientation the case goes on it goes this way so the uh, power out to the Amiga routes out on th this side over here. So I'm just going to set this in here over. It sits down in. I've got little nylon nuts. We can actually get them to spin on here. These can be a little tricky to work with. I wonder if the... Nope, too big. I just want to get them started if I can. It's For finger space, it's pretty tight down in there. Like I say, by doing this, we are electrically isolated. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to let these big old fingers get down on there and start that one on. Maybe I will, no. Nope. Uh, I need a decent sized flat here to drive that. And of course, I see Phillips everywhere and no flat in this case. I always have plenty of flats and no Phillips, and that's just a little too small. And this guy should work. I just want to, I'm just holding the nut between two fingers. And I'll just cinch this up tight. Doesn't need to be astronomically tight. Just enough to kind of hold everything in position. over here if I can get a hold of the nut. I think I'm going to have to use a mechanical grip onto the nut because I can't reach in there well.
Hopefully I'm somewhat on camera, although I'm sure this is pretty unexciting. I can't get the fingers in on there either. And of course, we're unplugged from the wall doing this work. If these were a flathead or a, yeah, flathead nylon screws, they'd actually blend down fairly nice into the case. There's that one. I don't want this one to fall out. The spacer will shift and that'll be a mess. Of course, where's the nylon nut here on the bench? There it is. Let's see if I have any shot I'm getting that into position where it'll start on that screw. caught. Sometimes you get lucky. Let me get a hold of the nut again if I can. Sorry if my big old bald head's getting in the camera view here. Well, that is just... Oh, come on. Quit being so stubborn. Every time I get a grip, it would shift out of the way. on that. You know, those, it's in there. It's it's nice and solid. It uh, doesn't need a ton of tension. These nylon on nylon actually grip really well. They don't tend to work loose. It's not moving. I'll come over here to the output. Try to remember how I was routing this. I say not beautiful build, but a sufficient build. Pieces of the clamshell are back together. Put a couple of screws in just to hold everything together. And we'll do some electrical tests next. Apparently I'm very confident this is going to work as I'm to me like it drops down straight to the threads. Yeah, that's fine. The other original case screws floating around here someplace. And 
course, with the switch I've got. So I can make it cooperate. I can just snap it in. Of course, positive, you know, power on is up. So let's, let's do a couple of electrical tests here. I'll actually get a meter out here on the screen so you can actually see the meter display. I haven't used this guy for a while. Ohms. I know there's a, I'm sure there's a continuity mode on here. I believe there is. Where's the uh, continuity mode? Right there. Get some leads in it. If we take the probe leads. This is not the fastest meter and it's had issues before with this where I just don't get low enough power to actually get the thing to beep. Try a different meter that might be faster, assuming it's got a good battery in it, which it does. See if this one's any quicker. Continuity mode. Interesting. Neither one of them wants to beep. This one is quicker, however, to settle the display. So what we're looking for here is zero ohms in this case in several places. So I'm going to take one side of the probe and I'm going to simply connect it to the safety ground, the earth ground, the round plug. I should not see continuity to either side of the line cord. And I don't. I should see continuity to the outside metal here. And I do. And shoot, I don't have the drawing with the pin out. Handy. Where did I put it? That's not it. So we're looking into the plug. So this is the end of the cable. Notice the notch there and the notch up here. I'm using that notch is up to be able to see the pins. Remember that we've got one side of the meter to that ground plug there. So I should be able to touch the outside shield and you can see the meter drop to zero. I should be able to touch the, z uh, the shield pin and see the meter drop to zero. I should be able to touch the ground pin and see the meter drop to zero. So that's what we did. We took the shield connection, the yellow wire. We took the black wire which comes to here. The yellow wire actually comes to here, the shield as well. And electrically we tied all three of those together I'm spilling stuff into the uh, ground over here. I'm going to now just jump on one of the power inputs and we shouldn't see any kind of continuity through to any pins. That should appear to all be open and it does. The other pin, they should all be open. Again, I'm in continu continuity mode here and it is. So now, I'm going to go ahead and plug the power supply in. The case is back on. It should be safe. We'll bring up the power. We'll uh, come over here to volts DC. Oh, that's millivolts dancing around. I need to get a ground. And the problem here is it really, wherever I hook up here, there's a chance of shorting the pins. Because this pin and the outer case here are electrically the same, I'm going to go ahead and just attach the clip lead down in this corner. And that way, if the alligator clip were to actually touch that pin, it wouldn't matter. 
and I'm going to check the voltages. Again, I've got the notch here and the notch here. I should see plus 12 volts there, and we see 12.3. I should see minus 12 on the center pin. And I see minus 11.98, and I should see plus 5 on this pin down here, being careful not to short it. And I've got 5.18. Now, I did adjust the voltage up slightly on the meanwhile power supply to make up for the loss in the cable. This cable's got about two tenths of a volt drop through the cable. And so that way by the time the power... Right now since there's no load that drop isn't evident. Under load where this is actually drawing current the resistance in the cable becomes important. And what we observed before was that the system powered up there was about two tenths of a volt drop through the cable uh, at load. So I just tweaked this up by a little bit. Again, you really want to make these tests. If the color coding in your cable was different, you might have ended up with, you know, 5 volts here accidentally. Or the plus and minus 12 swapped, which are going to be bad. Or plus or minus 12 on the 5 volt rail. So I'm being careful here not to short or slide around. Electrically, I'm happy with that. Of course, ground to ground shouldn't show anything. Ground to ground shouldn't show anything. So really, I'm happy with this. We got rid of that ugly wire that was soldered on the back that I think was dangerous. We made this mod safer because we're using nylon hardware to hold the power supply. So if something bad happened on the power supply, I wouldn't end up with line voltage or high voltage off the switching power supply or whatever out here where you coming in contact could get a shock. This is definitely safer. Uh, hopefully this video answers the question uh, that we had uh, on the for or on, uh, on on the video. Uh, I think that answers everything. So uh, I think we're good. So I'll wrap this up here, and we'll talk soon.